change the power to uh, 100 on the dot with fire and click explode. There should be a bit of lag. And then there will be your massive explosion. That is some seriously insane fire right there. Minecraft physics, everybody. <laughs> Hey everyone, Emma here from the Golden Potato and welcome to another awesome mod review where today we are going to be taking a look at the iPod mod which, as you may have guessed, adds in potatoes. <laughs> no, 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 I'm kidding. It adds in iPods and it is super awesome. So there is apparently an Apple store in the middle of the forest, which is super cool, and none other than Frank himself is here today running the cash register. So it's a sale today, up to 15% off all products, and we're going to go inside and take a look here. We have some MacBooks. They're um, not desktops. They look to be all laptops today. We have some very, very primitive iPads here. Not many buttons. I think I can, I can jump on them, and that's, I can press just one button, I guess. And then we have these beautiful looking iPods in the front here so amazing and obviously a shelf here for all of the other accessories and cases and stuff like that and some more iPods up here at the front desk and employee Frank himself is here today how you doing buddy uh, so good to see you so anyways we're gonna go back here and see how the iPod works how you make it what it does so that if you like the iPod yourself you can go and check it out on the magical link that I've left in the description below so that you can enjoy the iPods in your own Minecraft world so let's open up the chest there are some fancy schmancy parts here and we're gonna be going over them today so the first ingredient you're going to need is the electric wire and honestly, I don't know why the names say item dot whatever the name is dot name. I think that's just because all of the items, except for the iPod itself, are still work in progress. But uh, the first thing you're going to need is the electric wire, which is not only an ingredient, but also goes directly into making the iPod. So to craft this, you're going to need two string, a rose red, a lapis lazuli, and redstone. Any way you want on the crafting table. It's shapeless, so you can put anything on the crafting table. It doesn't have to be in this particular pattern. And then it'll give you two electric wires. Uh, the engine is the next part you need. And uh, to craft that, you're going to need three iron across the bottom, one electric wire that we just learned how to craft in the middle, right here. And then two redstone on either side. And the next thing you need is the internal battery. So the internal battery takes two electric wires, four iron, two on either side, and a nice piece of coal in the middle. The iPod cover will take seven iron ingots all the way around the side with another one of those electric wires. Lots of electric wires in the recipes. And the display is quite interesting. One glass pane, four gold ingots in a star shape like this, and then two electric wires on the bottom. So the iPod is the thing that you need. And then you simply combine all of the different ingredients together. The one electric wire, a battery, an engine, an item display, and a cover as well. And then that'll give you your nice iPod. So here we have it. Uh, there are several different ways you can activate it. If you want to place it on the ground, you simply hold shift or whatever your sneak key is and right click the ground and that'll place it just like all the others. But if you want to open it, you just right click it normally. And there you have it. Here's a nice little iPod here. And then you click the quit button on the top to quit. Uh, and there's one other thing we have to go over, which is iron string. Uh, to craft that, you get two from putting a regular wire with an iron ingot. And then you can use iron string to craft these beautiful headphones, which takes two iron string, another electric wire, and two uh, iron ingots. And I'm not sure if you can wear these. I'm going to try. I don't think you, that you can wear these. I think they're just for aesthetic purposes. Once again, this mod is work in progress. It's like for 1.7.2 and up. But hopefully you guys can enjoy it as well. Uh, the last thing you need to take a look at is the battery. Because as you use the iPod in game mode zero, it will lose durability. So if I go into game mode zero here and I right click it, you'll see that a durability bar appears and all I have to do is pair the iPod with a battery in the crafting table to uh, restore it to full durability. Because it doesn't break when it reaches zero durability, you just can't use it anymore. So to craft the battery, you're going to need one of those internal batteries, another internal battery on top of the one that you have to put in the iPod, an electric wire, a coal, and then two iron ingots each on either side. And uh, there's a crafting table down here, so if I take this very, very slightly damaged iPod and I combine it with a battery, I will get a brand new fresh iPod. It'll take up my battery, and then my iPod will be good to go. So let's just go back into game mode 1 here, and let's have some fun with this iPod. So a couple things I'm not going to show you simply because they will crash in my game, because once again, work in progress mod, but that's okay. And it's turning tonight, so without further ado, 
Let's take a look at the first one, which is the weather app. Now you can toggle rain by simply clicking the toggle rain button, and then uh, it'll say that it toggled downfall. Obviously it's raining now, and then I simply click the weather app again, and then toggle rain again, and it'll go away. Here we go, rain's going away, and it's nice out. So at a click of a button, we just changed the weather. You can also change it to day or night, so I can change it to night. Now it's nighttime, nice sunset, and then I can click the day button, and it'll be day again, which is super cool. Now, as you know, different times of day have a uh, different number specifying, like, what exactly po time the sun is in. Like, I, I, it's hard to explain, but, for example, when you set the time, you can be really specific and give a number. So, for example, if I use the minus one or plus one symbols, I can go up in different increments of, t increments of time. Blech, my tongue is spazzing. And then to confirm, I simply click the set time button. And um, I guess the number that we selected, which was uh, something, I don't know, pretty sure it was like 14,000 is the dead of night. So we're going to go back and change it today again, hopefully understand how that part works. There are specific numbers that correspond to different times in the sun cycle and the moon cycle, so you can select those. The next app is one of my favorites, the TNT. Uh, it looks kind of confusing, but it's really not. Um, the top blue area is where you can change your uh, coordinates. So the coordinates that you are given by default are where you are standing. So if I move over here, the coordinates are going to be different. But we can change the increments either by 1, by 10, or by 50. So you can change the coordinates and like control where they are. So that's what that does. And then you can also change the power. Go up in increments of 10 or 50. And then, lastly, you can choose if you want fire with that explosion or not. So, I think we should have some fun with this one. If I um, make it uh, with a power of, let's see, power of one, and then just repeat explode over and over again, it should blast me up places. I don't know why it's not blasting me up places. I should be spamming the button. Nope, I'm spazzing. I believe if I, if I do it in midair or something, it'll spaz me up into the air. No, I don't want to place it on the ground. Right click, I have to remember how to turn it on. And if I just spam the explode button, it'll blast me up into the trees. And it'll be lots of fun. But uh, I want to do a bigger explosion. I want to go all the way over here and do, let's see, a power 100 explosion with fire. Just, just to see how big it is, because I think it'll be fun. So if we right click the iPod, click on the TNT app, change the power to uh, 100 on the dot with fire and click explode. There should be a bit of lag and then there'll be your massive explosion. That is some seriously insane fire right there. Minecraft physics everybody. Minecraft physics. Uh, that That's weird but whoa look at all that fire there. Seriously though lagging my computer out like crazy. Um, and as you can see, similar to the nuclear TNT and the too much TNT mod, they create weird grids and crisscrosses, but, um, it is great for griefing your world. I mean, look how far the fire has gone. There's one all the way over there. Do you see that? Do you see that fire? I hope it didn't attack the lab. Oh, there's, um, there's some stuff that has, um, attacked the Apple Store, apparently. Let's just repair that. Uh, looks like it's broken some of the glass. That's okay, I guess. It's it's a remodeling. We're, we're remodeling the Apple Store, but let's right-click the iPod and take a look at the next one, which is the trash. Uh, several buttons here. The first one is the drop iPod button, which by clicking will drop the iPod, and then when I quit, the iPod will be on the floor, so I can run back over and pick it up. So if I want to pass the iPod to someone, and I don't have a drop button like Q, uh, which is the default drop button, you can right-click, click on the trash button, and then drop the iPod. And then when you quit, it'll be on the ground which is super duper awesome, but we can also clear all the items in our inventory. I'm not going to do that one because I want to keep the iPod with me for the mod review. But you can also clear a particular slot. So let's say I have um, a raw chicken in a slot right here, and I want to get rid of it. I simply go to trash and see that it's a slot number... I don't know, let's call it slot number 37. I'm not sure, but let's pretend it is. Then I would click clear slot, and it would be gone and nothing else. So if I have like an extra stack of dirt that I want to get rid of and I don't want to throw it on the ground, I can delete it all together by counting what slot it is and then just clicking clear slot and it'll be gone. So how cool is that? Uh, it will crash your game if you clear a clear slot, but um, that's cool. And I also forgot to mention that you don't have to click escape and continually reopen the menu every time you want to exit an app. If you're inside an app, you just click the home button like on a normal iPod. Uh, now the next app is the mine app, which is one of the more confusing ones, um, 
you can select a direction to mine and then click the mine button. So as you know, we have different coordinates. We have the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, and the Z coordinate. So if we move forward or back, our X coordinate will change. If we move side to side, our Z coordinate will change. And if we move up and down, our Y coordinate will change. So that is how that works. And then when you want to mine, you click on the mine app and the direction will either be left, right, uh, front, back, or up or down, and then you simply click a direction. So if I want to mine down, I'd click Y minus because that's decreasing my Y coordinates. So you have to be familiar with coordinates and where you are. But if I click Y minus and then mine, it'll mine some blocks beneath me. And I had already previously mined some stuff down here, so I just mined down into my massive hole. But if we go over here and we want to dig inside the mountain, I can look at my coordinates and see that I want to mine forward so that the X coordinates are moving up. So I right click, go to I'll mine and click X plus and it should mine in front of me and mine in front of me and mine in front of me and clear out the land and I can just keep blah, 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 blah. I can just click uh, keep spamming it and then I can place a light so if I'm it's dark out and I don't have torches and I'm strip mining every time I click place light uh, a magical glowstone will appear and then you can harvest it and you'll never have to go to the nether for your glowstone you need. It's a bit tedious but hey it works so that's that's basically how the mining works. I can also mine on um, the Z coordinate so that's left and right. I think that was this way and this way so up and down this way is pretty pretty cool when you use the Z coordinates to mine uh, and you can only mine in one direction at once but if you want to strip mine the mine app is the place to go. Uh, the spawn is one of my favorites. You can spawn any entity in any coordinates. So I'm going to spawn one uh, a couple in front of me. Let's spawn it just a couple X coordinates in front of me. And then let's see what mobs we can spawn. We can spawn a bat, a blaze, a cave spider, chicken, cow, creeper, enderman, ghast, giant zombie, which we're going to have to take a look at, horses, iron golems, so OP if you want them to protect your village or your uh, place wherever you're living, magma cues, mushrooms, ocelots, pigs, uh, zombie pigmen, sheep, silverfish, skeleton, slime, snowman, spider, squid, in case you want pesky squids to swim in your in your water and all that jazz, villagers, witches, wolves, zombies, and then back to entity. If you click spawn entity, it'll just spawn in a pig. That's the default. But um, this can be totally powerful. If you don't want to go through the pain of keeping farms, you can just boom, click on your spawn. And I wanted to spawn in the, the giant horse, so let's spawn that in. Uh, am I on peaceful? Let me see. Yeah, I'm on peaceful. So let's go to easy. Go back into the spawn menu. Click on giant zombie and spawn. There he is. How you doing, Mr. Zombie? You were looking wonderful today. It is so nice to have you around. And it looks like the time is setting tonight, so we'll just set it back today. Using our beautiful iPod. And let's spawn in a couple more uh, below us. Let's spawn them. Let's spawn in. Let's see. Let's spawn in a creeper. Is there a creeper here? No, I guess it's too far below ground. Oh, I heard it. Oh, poor creeper. It's suffocating. I'll turn it up. Yeah, you can hear it. You can hear it dying there. Uh, oh, there's the gunpowder. <laughs> That's so horrible. Um, let's spawn in an iron golem to protect us. How you doing? It's so powerful. Do you see the crafting recipe? Oh, oh no, he's going to attack the zombie. No, Mr. Zombie. <laughs> That's so scary. All right, well, let's move on and look at menu. Now, menu basically brings you up to other menus. So, whoops, I clicked on the wrong button. But you can access in-game menus. So you can access a crafting table, which is super cool. Uh, you can access the enchanting menu. Uh, you won't, if you're not standing by library books, though, if I want to enchant a chicken or something insane, uh, it'll only let me pick up tools. But if I wanted to enchant, uh, like, a diamond sword, uh, I won't be able to get high levels if I'm not near a book. Uh, that's okay, because the next one on the menu is the anvil, so we can repair stuff on the go. You can't repair chickens, obviously, not letting me pick up anything that you can't put in there to begin with. May or may not be a glitch, or that may be something handy. Uh, but the other things you can get to are the escape menu, so here I am at the escape menu by clicking on the escape button. I can quit the game, and I can open the game to LAN mode, so I can go to the LAN world settings here and start the LAN world, or I can quit the game, which I don't want to do, because I'm playing. And that iron golem has given up... Look at that face of sadness. Say something, I'm giving up on you. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Uh, moving on to the teleportation device, which will allow you to TP to the coordinates that you set, and then you can save the teleportation as sort of like a one-time waypoint to your house. So if we go in here and see what the coordinates are, 65, 70, 288. 
So that's 65, 72, 88. We can teleport to 65. Uh, well, oh, gosh, what was it? 72. Oh, no, gosh, 72. Oh, my gosh, I don't know coordinates. And then 288. So if we go 288, we can click on TP. And then we will teleport to 65, 72, 288. And then we can save the teleportation as a one-time waypoint. So the next time we go to TP, we can just TP to the place. I think that's how it worked. I don't know. You can save. You can definitely save a waypoint. I'm not sure what the order of um, uh, buttons you're supposed to press is. But that is the point of the form, after all, to help you provide more detail than the review. I'm simply supposed to give you sort of an overview of what the mod is. So I'm not going to be specific here, but you can definitely save the TP if I click Save TP. Yes. Now I can save the TP, and next time I can just teleport to the... TP. I don't know how it works. It works. It works somehow, but the next one is probably one of my favorites as well because you get to make any potions. Potions of speed, slowness, haste, mining fatigue, strength, instant health, which can be pretty helpful, instant damage, not so much, uh, jump boost, nausea, regeneration, resistance, fire resistance, water breathing, invisibility, blindness, night vision, hunger, weakness, poison, wither, health boost, absorption, saturation. I can't believe it because you can't even craft those potions in vanilla Minecraft and then back to speed and slowness. So I believe all of these aren't splash potions. If you want particle effects to not annoy you, you can turn them off. You can even change the potency up to how far? Oh wow, you can change the level up to something really high and then you can change the effect. So if I want uh, it to last one minute and I want a potion of speed. I'm going to apply it. Oh, is that slowness? Did I just apply sp slowness? How come? Let's try applying level 8. I want to see how fast I go. Wow, look at that speed. That is fast. Oh, do you see that? It's so zoomed in you can't even see my face. Oh, look at that. I have it. Nope, I don't have it anymore. I had it for a very short time, but as you can see, awesome potions effects. And you couldn't see my hand actually because I probably pressed the wrong button. But uh, if we want to do another one, like um, let's do jump boost, and I want to make it like a level nine. It'll last for ten seconds. Apply, and look at how far I'm jumping. Well, whoops, I accidentally flew that time. But this is how high I'm jumping in regular in regular Minecraft. I'm just jumping now. Uh, I'm not sure if you'll take fall damage, but for 10 seconds you can get a jump boost, or you can just set the time to last an hour. So for your entire Minecraft play, you can just have a supreme jump boost, which is absolutely insane. So you experiment with the magic side of the iPod as well. Next is some games. When you win a game, you get a small prize. Select a game and play. So the first one is Code, which in my opinion is really difficult, because all you do is you just guess random codes over and over again. And there are 9 times 9... Sorry, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 possibilities. So that is 10 to the power of 4. Do the math. 10 to the power of 4 possibilities. So you can just try to solve the code yourself. I don't really get the point of the game because it's pretty boring. If I just click on numbers, I'm just sitting here clicking randomly. If you want to strategize and see what your award is for solving a code with 10 to the power of 4 possibilities, be my guest. But the other game is Gamble, and it actually costs you some gold nuggets. So let's grab some gold nuggets here. And apparently, this game robs you of your gold. Uh, you simply roll... And I'm not quite sure what you need to get. Maybe matching numbers or numbers and I think it's numbers in order. So like one, two, three, or two, three, four, something like that. And then your reward is a gold ingot. But since you're more than guaranteed at this point not to get uh, a winning sort of roll within nine rolls, you're actually losing more gold than you're getting. So I could just spam the heck out of this button and boom, I just lost a stack of gold nuggets with nothing. And it won't let you roll if you don't have any in your inventory. So that's how the games work. Uh, I think they can be more creative with games in the future. But, you know, that is my opinion because the games are, are they're okay. But the next one is stats, which is super cool. Gives you your coordinates even though you get them any other time. Uh, that you are using another app like the TNT app and stuff like that and then you can go and check out the time of day the time since last death and then this button in the corner here will refresh the time of day and the time since your last death so this is the exact time so if I were to go back to the weather app and set the time to something near that that just gives you an example of like how the time system works with all the crazy numbers uh, and then life is probably one of the most powerful. You can set your XP level. So you can subtract experience or gain experience. So I, I just gain 9 experience there. Like if I go into game mode 1, sorry, game mode 0, 
and I want a new experience, I can boom. Like, look how much experience I'm getting. And, uh, oh, that zombie's trying to kill me. Zombie's trying to kill me. Going back into game mode one. Ah, don't kill me. Don't kill me, Mr. Zombie. Ah, you died. <laughs> okay. And that's what the experience does. So, so ridiculously powerful. Uh, you can heal yourself. You can kill yourself. It'll tell you if you're healed or if you're killed. And you can also set your spawn, which is buggy. So we're not going to do that. So we're just going to click the home button and check out the next one, which is settings. Oh, this one is interesting. You can set a password code. So let's set the password code to uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and put the code to on. So when I activate the code, that means that when I open up the iPod, I'll have to type in a password to open it like the lock on your phone. And then once I did, I was my password 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm pretty sure it was 1, 2, 3, 4. Am I, am I seriously locked out of my own phone? I'm locked out of my own phone. I'm going to have to get a new iPod. What is up with that? That really stinks. So oh, no. No, I'm locked out of my iPod. I'm locked out of my iPod. Oh, gosh, this is not good. One moment, please. Right, so something weird is happening where if I just click the zero button, it'll open. So let me just go back to settings here and check the code. If I, oh, I know what it is. You know what? It's because I had code off when I set the code and then I didn't click change. So this is how it works now. I set the code, put the code to on and click change. And now I change my code to one, two, three, four and it should work. So please work, one, two, three, four. Oh, it works. Okay, so I'm not sure if I made that clear or not, but um, basically, when you go to settings, make sure that it says code on and make sure that you click change after you enter in your code. Uh, setting the time today again and going back to the last two apps. The first of which is info. It uh, gives you recipes for all the things that you can click on, which is super cool. And the names, but we already went over those. Uh, you can also go over who the mod was created by and then uh, the status of some of the apps and also how to place the iPod on the ground which we went over as well and the last one is music which is super cool because you can select any disc without wasting a precious diamond on a jukebox so for example if I want to listen to hmm chirp I can just click play and there we go playing chirp this is my jam I love this song let's see what else there is we can listen to Mel we have to click stop first, and then you can click play. And there we go. Playing some nice music discs here. I think I think cat sounds cool too. Ooh, that's pretty. So that, I think that's pretty much what this mod has to offer. I mean, you can walk around with your headphones in hand, even though they're for aesthetic purposes. You can just sort of chill with them in your hand and then be walk, walking around to your music. But my tongue is just not working today. But um, that is that is completely okay because I think the mod is going to end here. So if you have enjoyed this video, then please do make sure to leave a like. And if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing to The Golden Potato today for frequent Minecraft videos. If you do have any suggestions, questions, or comments, please do leave them in the comment section below. And uh, once again, if you want to check out this mod, it is for Forge 1.7.2 and up. And it is super cool. It is called the iPod mod, spelled like E-Y-E -E pod, or it's also called the iPod mod. If you just look it up like that, you'll find it as well. Um, the Apple Store is not a map. I made it myself. Um, not the best Apple Store. And then, of course, Frank is here as usual. So thank you so much for watching. This has been Emma and Frank from the Golden Potato. And I will see you all next time. Goodbye!